Stoicism is essentially a guide to life. It teaches you that you cannot control nor rely on external events. The only thing that you can control is your own attitudes and behaviour. Ultimately, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to a situation that matters. There are four underlying virtues in Stoic philosophy. Courage, physical bravery, persevering in the face of adversity, acting rightly in the face of popular opposition, fairness, kind-heartedness, benevolence, doing the right thing, wisdom, enlightenment, understanding, using your common sense, and self-discipline, temperance, self-control, moderation, doing nothing in excess. In this video, I will walk you through 10 easy steps that you can practice in your life to live the Stoic lifestyle. Number 1. Never complain. Complaining is easy, but does it achieve anything? If I complain that my manager doesn't know what he's doing, does that help me? Or anybody else for that matter? If I complain that the Wi-Fi is slow, will that help it become faster? Complaints just lead to frustration. Stoicism is defined by action, not words. It tells us that complaining is a useless gesture and exceptionally futile. Roman Emperor and Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once wrote, The cucumber is bitter? Then throw it out. There are brambles on the path? Then go around them. That's all you need to know. Nothing more. Don't demand to know why such things exist. American civil rights activist Maya Angelou once said, What you're supposed to do when you don't like a thing is change it. If you can't change it, change the way you think about it. Don't complain. Number 2. Speak little and well. Words can be very powerful. Saying the wrong thing at the wrong time can hurt people tremendously. Saying the wrong thing can get you into trouble. Unfortunately, once you say something, no amount of apologies will make your words magically go back into your mouth. It's similar to shutting the stable door after the horse has bolted. But if you choose your words wisely, if you choose your words carefully, you can create a wonderfully positive reaction in the world. Your words can make somebody feel much better about themselves. Roman Senator Cato the Younger once said, I begin to speak only when I'm certain what I'll say isn't better left unsaid. Wise words. But of course, in life, you'll sometimes find yourself in difficult situations where it's hard not to react negatively. For example, when somebody insults you. Many of us might get defensive and blurt out something mean or derogatory. But will that really help the situation? Will engaging in emotional fights make you feel better about yourself and help you live a good life? No, of course not. When you're feeling like you're about to say something bad, stay calm, take a deep breath, and think before you speak. Number 3. Treat your time as precious. Social media, the 24-hour news cycle, countless TV shows and movies, video games, mindless shopping. There seems to be an endless array of stuff in this world designed for one purpose – to distract you. You only have a finite life. Do you really want to spend hours every day checking your social media feed, finding out what somebody, who you barely know, had for breakfast? You should use your time to do things that are important to you, things that you are passionate about. The problem is, many of us put these things off until tomorrow or the next day. Tomorrow I will start spending more time with my children. Next week I'll start eating healthily and exercising. You tell yourself you want to improve, but waste half the day binge-watching the latest TV show. Aren't you tired of fooling yourself? Put down the controller. Put down the phone. Start living your life to the fullest today. Number 4. Accept what you cannot change. Many things are beyond your control. Natural disasters, world events, how the person at the park looked at you strangely when you walked past. There's absolutely no use in dwelling on these things that you cannot change. It will only lead to anxiety and dissatisfaction. Instead, you need to focus on what you can change. You can't decide whether you'll get the new job or not, but you can decide how well you'll prepare for the interview. You can't decide whether the football referee will make fair calls or not, or whether there'll be an unexpected gust of wind at a key point in the match but you can decide how much you'll practice before the game. The point being, you can only control your thoughts and your actions, not the outcome. Number 5. Focus on the present, also known as mindfulness. It's easy to worry about the future that may or may not occur. It's easy to get hung up on what happened in the past. 
but ultimately, these things are outside of your control. The only thing that you are truly in control of is your current thinking. In simple terms, the only moment that matters is right now. There's no point beating yourself up over what happened in the past. Learn from your experiences and move on. As Marcus Aurelius once wrote, each of us lives only now, this brief instant. The rest has been lived already, or is impossible to see. Number 6. Be kind, be fair, don't be harsh. Many of you all have heard the proverb, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. It's easy to persuade someone by being kind and positive than it is to be rude and negative. Sure, some rude and negative people get their way by instilling fear in their opponents, but is this really a nice way to live? People will not respect you if you're rude and demanding. They might do what you say temporarily, but you won't have earned their respect. Kindness goes a long way. Harshness leads to people just resenting you. The Stoic resists the impulse to respond to rudeness in kind. If someone treats you rudely and you respond with rudeness, you've only proven to them that they were justified in their actions. Roman philosopher Seneca once wrote, how much better to heal than seek revenge from injury. Vengeance wastes a lot of time and exposes you to many more injuries than the first that sparked it. Number 7. Alter your expectations. Similar to acceptance, altering your expectations is a major part of Stoic philosophy, as well as other philosophies such as Buddhism. If you expect everyone to be nice to you all the time, you'll forever be disillusioned. If you expect every restaurant you go to to serve up delicious food, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Stoics believe in Amor Fati, the love of fate. You should treat each moment, no matter how challenging, as something to be embraced, not avoided. The Greek Stoic philosopher Epictetus once wrote, Do not seek for things to happen the way you want them to. Rather, wish that what happens happen the way it happens. Then you'll be happy. Number 8. Practice Minimalism Practitioners of Stoicism are not attached to external things. They help people not because they want reward or praise, but because it's the right thing to do. Minimalism is all about living with less. It's easy to get caught up in our consumer-driven society. New cars, new watches, the latest fashion, but it's all for naught. More stuff will not bring you more happiness. More stuff will actually do the opposite. More stress, more debt, more things to worry about. Don't let physical things control you. Don't spend time worrying about what people will think of you. If somebody only likes you because of your new car or your giant house, do you really want that person to be your friend? Your life should be based on your experiences, not your worldly possessions. Number 9. Learn from everything. Accept that you don't know everything and that everything that happens in your life is a learning opportunity. Remember that wisdom is one of the core virtues of Stoic philosophy, and part of cultivating wisdom is admitting that you still have a lot to learn. Be open to new knowledge. Never close your mind to new ideas. Learn from your mistakes. Just as with a child who is learning to read, it's okay for you too to make mistakes. If your train is late and you have to wait an extra 30 minutes, you could get angry and frustrated and complain to the station master, or you could treat the opportunity as a learning experience, a chance to practice patience. Number 10. Train yourself. Unlike other intellectual pursuits, the purpose of Stoicism is its practical application. Premeditatio malorum, the premeditation of troubles that might lie ahead. Try imagining losing something that is very important to you, your job, your house, or even a loved one. Only do it for a short time, but that is enough to prepare you for such an occurrence, to reflect on the good things you have in life, and to help overcome your fears. Stoics believe not only in thinking about misfortune, but actively practicing it. Wear your worst clothes. Take a cold shower. Don't eat anything for a day. Get away from the comfort of your home and belongings. By actively practicing adversity, it loses its ability to disrupt your life. Seneca once wrote, It is in times of security that the spirit should be preparing itself to deal with difficult times. While fortune is bestowing favors on it, then is the time for it to be strengthened against her rebuffs. Set aside now and then a number of days during which you will be content with the plainest of food, and very little of it, and with rough, coarse clothing, and then ask yourself, is this what I used to dread? Stoicism is about improving yourself and your life. It teaches you that you cannot control nor rely on external events. 
The only thing that you can control is your own attitudes and behavior. As a Stoic, you act out of reason, not emotion. You accept fate graciously and try to make the best of it. You appreciate what you have and never complain. You're kind, generous, and forgiving towards others. You're calm in the face of adversity and are not attached to external possessions. You live in harmony with yourself, mankind, and nature. But ultimately, you live your life to the fullest and do not waste a single second.